everybody it's the peak of summer and the cucumbers are coming in so it's time to preserve them i'm making these sweet and spicy pickle spears that everyone's gonna love so let's get started My cucumbers came out kind of strange this year. I don't know if it's from the weird growing season that we're having out here, or if it's this particular type of cucumber, but they're all kind of these short and round little chodes. So instead of pickling these whole, I'm gonna cut these into spears and chips. Now I've got a lot of setup to do and it's gonna take a while. So the first thing I wanna do is get these cucumbers down into an ice bath to get them nice and firm and crisp. And I'll just leave them in there for a couple of hours while I set everything else up. The basic ingredients for pickle brine are vinegar, either white or apple cider is fine. I just make sure that it is 5% acidity vinegar. I'm gonna add some water in there and salt. Now, whatever kind of salt you use, make sure it doesn't have the anti-caking agent in it that's in a lot of different salts. This is why I always use canning and pickling salt for this, but there are kosher salts and sea salts that don't have that anti-caking agent in them, and those are fine to use as well. Now, since these are gonna be sweet, I'm gonna add in sugar, of course. The ratios of these ingredients vary widely from recipe to recipe, so that's something you're going to want to play around with and find your sweet spot. And you might actually use different ratios for different recipes, and that's just part of the fun of doing this stuff at home. Once you got your basic brine put together, it's time to get creative and flavor that brine. And there are a ton of different ingredients you could use to flavor your brine. Of course, there's the standard old pickling spice. I like to add onions in there, hot peppers, garlic is always a good choice. Fresh dill is great, of course. I like black peppercorns, mustard seeds, maybe a little turmeric for color you can go crazy with this so play around and find some flavors that you really like so for my recipe today i'm gonna stick with the red pepper the garlic the onion like some mustard seeds and some black peppercorns. I think that should be a pretty good tasting pickle. Mm. All right, so let's put together that base brine. And I always like to make extra because I just hate running out of brine right at the very end. And all these ingredients are really inexpensive. So I'm gonna go with eight cups of vinegar. Got four cups of water. I'll do three tablespoons of that pickling salt. The amount of sugar you put in here is very subjective. I've seen recipes that go as high as 50% sugar, but that is far too sweet with me. So I'm gonna start with two cups. I'll give that a taste, but I may go as high as four cups in this brine. Now I'll take this over to the heat and get it started heating up while I get all my flavors ready. For my fresh ingredients today, I'm gonna to use the onion, the peppers, and the garlic. I'm not really even gonna measure these. I'm just gonna slice these onions real thin. I'm gonna dice up these red peppers. I better check and see just how spicy they are. Oh, oh yeah.
my dry ingredients down into that hot brine first to get them to try to start softening up. And I don't really measure these, but I'll kind of estimate for you. So I'm gonna start with, looks like a half cup of mustard seed. We'll do two tablespoons of peppercorns. And I'm gonna put in two teaspoons of turmeric for some color. So I'll go throw this into that hot brine and let them start hydrating. And then I think it's time to start cutting up some cukes. Ice cold, nice and crunchy cucumbers. And the first thing I'm gonna do is snip off that little blossom end. They say there's an enzyme in there that can cause your pickles to go soft. So let's just get rid of that. If you want to get extra crispy with it, you can actually cut a lot of that seed out. And this piece will be very crunchy. All right, got a hot jar. Whew. Now I just want to stuff this guy nice and full with those pickles. I might need to trim some of these. These are sticking up a little too tall, so I'm going to have to trim them down to below that bottom ring right in there. So what I'll do is I'll just get one and I'll trim the rest to match it. All right, let's pack them in there nice and tight. Looking good. My jars are all packed up and now it's time to get the brine in there. But first, let's talk about keeping these things crispy. And there are a number of ways to do it. You can put grape leaves in there. You can put black tea in there. But I am going to use lime. Now, not this kind of lime. Certainly not that kind of lime. I'm going to use this kind of lime. This is some calcium chloride they sell specifically for keeping your pickles crisp. And it's real easy to use. You add it right into the jar. And for each of these pint jars, it is one rounded eighth of a teaspoon. I don't have an eighth of a teaspoon, so I'm going to use one partial quarter of a teaspoon per jar. <laughs> it should be fine. Now, just before I take this brine to the jars, I'm gonna put in those fresh ingredients. I just wanna blanch them a little bit. And if they're cut small enough, you can put them straight into the jar. I'm just gonna toss them in there. And just give that a minute or so, and then we'll go and take this to the jars. Got my pickling funnel. Now I'll go right in with that hot brine. Wanna make sure I get some of the nice fresh good stuff in every one. And we're gonna fill those up to the bottom thread of the jar, leaving just around an inch of head space. Now we'll just wipe down all these edges, clean off any extra brine on there. Some of these are a little more full than I like, but I'm gonna risk it. <laughs> Bad example, don't do it. My lids I also boiled. They're still kind of hot, but I can handle them. Pop one of those on, every one of these. Rings should always go on really nice and easy. And just snug them up. You don't have to really ream on these at all. You want 
the air to escape from inside of these jars. So don't cinch them down super tight. And if you get a damaged ring like this guy, just toss that one. It's life is over. Now, we'll take these over and get them into my boiling cauldron of water. Down in we go. Always set them on a rack like this so they're not touching the very bottom of the pot. And make sure they are completely covered with water. And once this comes up to a good boil, we'll set the clock for 10 minutes. I can't believe you guys didn't tell me I didn't put the ring on that one. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> Check it out. I overfilled and had a couple of blowouts. Some of these are a little more full than I like, but I'm gonna risk it. So there, it's a good lesson for you. Don't be dumb like me and make sure you don't overfill your jars. Well, after that first batch, I did things proper and I didn't have any more problems with jars breaking on me, so don't do like I do and take your time and make sure you're not overfilling your jars. Now let's just say I did that for an example of what not to do. So after they get all the way cooled down, I'll remove the rings and I'll put them up on the shelf. And they might be okay to try after a week or so, but I never get into my pickles for at least a month. That gives that brine a good long time to soak up all the flavor of the spices and work through those cucumber spears. Much, much, much later. Check out that bite. Mmm. Oh yeah. That is a tasty pickle. It's sweet and tart and spicy and nice and crunchy. It's very reminiscent of a certain famous brand, and that makes sense because when I was deciding how to flavor these, I looked into a bottom of a jar of that brand to see what was in it, and I used everything I could identify in this recipe. As a matter of fact, let me compare the two. That's a good pickle too, but it is far, far sweeter than this one. So if you want to get this, you're going to want to add a couple of more cups of sugar into that brine. Other than that, the flavor profile is very similar. These do have the addition of some celery seed, which is really nice in there. And I didn't have any on the shelf, so I didn't use any when I made mine. But these are still a really great pickle and close enough to that that my wife is absolutely gonna murder these when she finds them. Or if she finds them. <laughs> mm. Well, I hope all of you who have gardens have booming crops coming in. And if you don't, maybe you've got a nice local farm stand you can patronize. And I hope you give this recipe a try because I know you're gonna love it. Thanks for watching. Yeah. <laughs>